first period on the Comcast Network is brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. By Rothman Institute at Jefferson, exclusive orthopedic and healthcare provider of the Philadelphia Flyers. And by your local Chevy dealers. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing, remove your caps, and welcome Master Sergeant Tom Roach. Tom has served for 26 years and was deployed to Iraq in 2004 and 2005 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. He currently works full-time for the 34th Infantry Division in Rosemount and is here tonight representing all the great men and women from the state of hockey who so bravely serve our country. Now, please sing loud and proud as James Bone leads us in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Ready to go. Second and final meeting of the season between the Flyers and Wild. The Wild beat Philadelphia back in November at the Wells Fargo Center. This is Zucker scoring a goal with less than a minute to go. In the game, the Flyers really had the better of the play. But uh, one of the big differences in the game uh, was the guy between the pipes for the Wild that night. Well, he's back in on this one as well. Take a look at our Kia starting goaltenders. Ray Emery brings his 6-4 and 1 record to Minnesota. He started the road trip off with the W in Toronto on Saturday night. And Darcy Kemper was not supposed to start. Nicholas Backstrom was going to be the starter, but came down some kind of stomach ailment. And this building has not been friendly lately to Darcy Kemper. He has been pulled in four of his last five starts here at home. But there you have our Kia starting goaltenders. And that includes their last game here. Lost in overtime to Winnipeg when Kemper was pulled the first period. Underway, the Flyers in their road whites as they will be for the next little while as they continue along in this eight-game road trip. Game number three here tonight. Eric jerseys for the homestanding Wild. There's a Pongville getting the puck back out to Jonas Brodeen at the point. You look at the Flyer line combinations at the top of your screen and it's status quo for the Flyers is in terms of the players up front. Go picking there and going down was Jake Voracek and the Wild get the puck back as all right, Suter will move it ahead. I made the point in pregame. You could count the number of times Jake Voracek was lying on the ice on one hand this season. I meant when people were hitting him. Nobody was near him no. and he went down. No, that one, he went down on his own. Now a couple other flyers collide here as the wild move through center. Is Parisi moving up. Zach Parisi all the way across. And Jared Spurgeon, the diminutive defenseman, will move it back around behind the Philadelphia net. Parisi getting it back to the point. There goes Candela's shot. Batted away by Emery and it goes out of play. Gives us a chance to show you the scratches from the respective lineups here in the late ad of Backstrom to that list for the Wild as he was scheduled to be the starting goaltender. For the Flyers, same guys out. Zach Ronaldo not quite ready to go from his upper body injury. Steve Mason is going to rejoin the club for the second part of the road trip and skate with the team and could see action before this trip ends. That's good news as he's trying to come back from the back injury. Good news for Steve Mason, absolutely. And good news that the Flyers have enough depth that Rob Zepp was able to come in and pick up the win in Winnipeg. So about as deep as the Flyers have been in goal in a lot of years. Wild able to win the draw. Virgin sending it in front, looking for the redirection from Mikhail Grenlin, but it went on through. The Flyers will move the puck up. R.J. Umberger getting it into the Minnesota zone. Spurgeon takes over there. The defense score for the Wild has been ravaged by the Mumps. 
five of them have at one point missed games due to the mumps. I say five members of the Wild, I mean five members of the defense corps. All the same core got hit by the mumps. And uh, so that has been a major problem for Minnesota in this one. Lawton winding that puck into the Minnesota zone. Flyers after it. Braden Chen dug it off the wall, but he lost control. And Nino Niederreiter sends it out to the neutral zone. Still waiting for the first shot on goal through the first minute and a half of this one as Luke Shen drops it back. Andrew McDonald ahead, and now Braden Shen sends it in. And another fire is down on the ice, and very slow getting up is Braden Shen. Oh, did he ever get hit by Matt Cook, ridden 100% full speed into the boards? Well, this is uh, something we saw the other night. Flyers were hit hard by that Winnipeg club. Shen did make his way to the bench. He wasn't that far away, but it was a very slow skate to the bench. We'll check on his condition as the Flyers get the puck into the Minnesota zone. Luckily, he didn't have very far to go. He got That's hit right. in that little space of glass between the benches. Zucker moving up, ridden by Strike, Take it off the puck beautifully there. Nick Grossman gets to it. Got it ahead, but not out of the zone. It's kept in. Fires able to get it back. And Belmar will get to Vandevelde. Vandevelde back to Belmar. Up the middle with room. Wines fires in the save made by Kepper. Comes back out in front. Kepper batting that one away. Spurgeon is barreled over by Vandevelde. Now the puck goes back the other way. And here is Scandella with a shot that goes off the stick into the corner. Nico Coy with the captain of the Wild. Gets the puck back behind the net. Flyers are all over that. And Grossman will move it ahead. Cavalier. And now out to center, but the Flyers lose it to try to make a change here, at least finish the change. As the Wild get the puck back in, Henry will hand off to Grossman. And three minutes in, just that one shot on goal so far. Wild intercepting the puck at their own line and move it ahead. Ryan Carter, the much traveled forward. Back in his home state now playing for the Wild. Puck came out in front as Stu Bickle got in in the fourth check, but nobody there for Minnesota. Four check the other way, but again, the Flyers turn it over at the line. And they aren't keeping it simple so far. Now Voracek will carry the puck in. Voracek, all the way around behind the Minnesota net. Ducks a check attempt by Suter, but then gets leveled by Brodine. Suter to the puck, and he'll poke it out to the neutral zone. Sent right back in by McDonald. Voracek was still in the zone. So the Flyers don't touch the puck, and now will make a change. What's the feeling out process here in the early going? Well, Giroux and Voracek are used to being the hunted. In this game, you could expect them maybe to be hunters as they were in overtime. They forced the turnover that led to the winning goal. Minnesota not an overly physical team, but everybody tries to be physical against Giroux and Voracek. Flyers digging for the puck behind the net. They get it, Reed, but his pass goes all the way out to the line. Coburn there hit Reed with his wrist shot. And now they'll just roll the puck in along the boards. Couture after it. Bounces ahead, though, to Granlund. Instead, he missed the last game with an illness. But to back in the lineup here tonight. Very talented youngster moves in. His cross ice pass tipped away by Reed, and he'll get to the puck, move it ahead, and then fling one in on Kemper, who's up the rebound right in front. Spurgeon is there to keep it away from Couturier. Relatively easy shot there, but Kemper is a goalie, as Bill mentioned, not with supreme confidence right now as he has been struggling after a great start to the season. Grossman ridden in by Charlie Coyle, but the Flyers find the puck, and they'll move it ahead. Chen appears to be okay as he's back out on the ice and moving well. Candela sends it ahead. Tip pass right wing. Here's Niederreiter. The leading goal scorer for the Wild. Drops it back to Cook. Backhander. That goes wide. All the way out to Scandella and then around behind the net. Cook reaching for it. Getting away from Strike. Matt Cook in his second game back after missing 22 with a hip injury. And he was very feisty. Another flyer goes down as Lawton stepped on the puck it appeared. And the Wild sent it back in. So we pass the five minute mark. Who needs whistles? As we move along here. Le Cavalier cutting to the slot, getting room. Wise fire save. Kemper. Rebound back to Le Cavalier. Another shot is denied. And Le Cavalier, after those two goals the other night, is smelling it. Now here's Belmar to the slot. His shot off a stick flutters to the glass. And it's Le Cavalier again. And this line. Spending time in the offensive zone. They liked it in Winnipeg. Yeah, they have did. not changed the script at all. They've generated easily the two best scoring chances so far. One by Belmar and that one by Le Cavalier. Now they'll change as Zucker lost the puck in the Philadelphia line. Coburn looking for Voracek. Voracek trying to get to it. Tips it back to shot. Raffle goes high and wide. And the Flyers get it back. Raffle for Voracek. Batting it out of midair. Then it goes off a skate. Now Vanek will move it ahead, but there's Luke Shen to say it. send it into the corner. And Raffle tried to touch pass to the slot, but that was gobbled up by Grenland and then cleared by the Wild down the ice. Emery out of his net to get it to McDonald. And then right back to Shen, who hesitates. 
And now gives to McDonald again. He'll hit Giroux in the middle. Oh, Giroux with a wrist shot. Save. Kemper again looked a bit shaky, but he's able to cover it up, and we will step aside. to head down ice side for the first time. First time we had a chance to welcome Chris Terry to the broadcast. Yeah, thanks very much, Jimmy. Yeah, no, no whistles for some time. You know, two of the best chances the Flyers had in the early going here were by the fourth line, who were absolutely phenomenal the other night. Van de Velde, Belmar, Le Cavalier, uh, guys that were uh, the catalyst in that w uh, victory the other night, uh, having a great third period. Uh, they've done a great job and had a couple chances already. But all healthy scratches at one point in the last month, and they've really uh, gelled together well and have done a great job Getting themselves, uh, getting themselves together. You see some stuff they did the other night. Uh, pretty special uh, third period. Look at they're excited together. You got guys like Belmar and Vandevelde playing with a guy like Vinny. It's got to be exciting. And Vinny getting back in his groove too, creating plays. Vandevelde hitting the post. Uh, in the second period. Pierre Edward Belmar going to the front of that, playing good hockey. Shot upstairs, went off Vinny. And again, look at this effort by Vandevelde out to Le Cavalier. And what a goal right there to tie that hockey game. They've been tremendous. Those three guys, and obviously Craig Berube loves secondary scoring production, especially from the fourth line. Well, I'll tell you, that last goal, Vandevelde was not given credit for an assist. The league looked at it, but apparently, in looking closely, he more or less oh. hit the defenseman stick into the puck, but he made the play. He, he deserves something. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think these guys are pushing to get rid of the of the moniker fourth line. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like that term. Yeah, and Craig Ruby probably won't number them either. He'll play the line that's most effective, and that's why you saw that trio out there so much in the third period. Now the Wild, Zach Parisi tipping the puck deep into the Philadelphia zone. Dropped it back. They center his suitor. Little spot shot that goes wide and to the corner. And a strike. Mark Strike trying to get away from Parisi. Got that through coil, but Grossman couldn't handle Reed over, though. And he'll send Couture up through the middle. Couture hit across the line, looking for Umberger, but Umberger couldn't get there. Couture follows up. In front, Umberger, he scores! Sean Couture with a great play as he sent it back across the slot. Umberger went to the net, and the Flyers are on the board. It's 1-0 as they score for a case of Tasty Cake. Boy, you can't teach reach. And that's what Sean Couturier has. Did a great job of trying to make a play when he crossed the blue line here. Used his reach to make sure it wasn't offside. Then reached, got it back, went all the way around, and it never made it to R.J. Umberger. It went in off the skate, the left skate of Ryan Suter yeah. in front, but full marks for Sean Couturier. You know what? That's great hockey, guys. That's taking care of their best two defensemen, too. Terrible turnover by Brodeen. And Suter giving up space, Billy, when he's coming into the zone. That's a great goal by the Flyers to give themselves another good lead in this game. So the Flyers get the jump here. They're giving Couturier credit for the goal. All those replays, it still looks like RJ gets that puck, but as you can see with the very first look, the puck didn't make it there. But the motion and everything, it looks like RJ's goal. They're still thinking, that the, some people, that it was RJ's goal, but no, it is Couturier who will get credit off of the skate in front. His ninth of the year as he gets point number 99 in his NHL career. RJ would have had to have the world-class reach on this one. <laughs> see, R RJ made the motion like he was yes. shooting. That's what threw That's the way to many go, people off. Way to go through with the deception. Well, sometimes your brain is telling you to go ahead and shoot. The puck is only a foot or two away from your stick. You go ahead with that motion. And it's not contrived. It's just a natural no. reaction. You're not going to be able puck. to stop at that point. Right. right. So the Flyers have the first goal of the game as LeCavier centers. They look for the second, but Nick Schultz, the longtime Minnesota Wild player, did not ram that one home. He would love to get on the board here. It's been a long time between goals for Nick, but for him to break that drought here in Minnesota where he played all those years would be special. Delmar lost his edge as he went down, but stays Tripped. after that puck. Now it's flipped to him along the goal line. He can't come up with it. Gets back up, has it again. Puck seems to be following him around here the last couple of games. Schultz back behind the net. He'll try to work it out in front. The Cavalier back behind the cage. They'll have to track it down in the corner, but instead it'll be the Wild and Justin Falk, the defenseman, moving it ahead. Icing is the call against Minnesota. Hey, want to let everybody know there's still time to grab your Santa Sack gift pack as the perfect last-minute gift. It includes two tickets, an autographed puck, a flyer's calendar, sorted concessions, no guaranteed fights, though, and more. Starting at $150, you can shop at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com. Then again, come to a Flyers game 
you're going to see excellent effort, and you never never know what else you're going to see. There might be a fight. We just can't include that in the Santa sack. Can't guarantee it. Right. Guaranteed in the 70s, Billy, there would have been for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Now they're icing against Minnesota. Back to back icings against the home team. Tomorrow, Michael Barkat is talking about the Flyers and Sixers. We'll also discuss the Eagles in their season finale against the Giants. Watch Philly Sports Talk presented by Comcast Business tomorrow night at 5 on Comcast Sportsnet. And Wild able to gain control off the defensive zone draw. Falk throws it ahead and Stu Bickle, normally a defenseman, playing up front. It's at the center, but right back in goes Voracek. Voracek giving room, sends it in front, redirected wide by Raffle. As he went between the legs, but couldn't get the redirection on net. Now Jason Pominville, the veteran, will send into the Philadelphia zone. Grossman's back. He gets to Mark Streit. Mark Streit, eight assists, and a plus seven in his last nine games. That puck in, compared with Nick Grossman, who hasn't had a minus game in 15 contests. Flyers steal the puck again. Here's Voracek spinning away from Suter. Voracek to the dot and then back out. And the shot save, rebound, they score! It looked like it might have hit the crossbar, but it went in as Claude Giroux jumps and the rebound and the Flyers off to a great start here in Minnesota. Giroux again for a case of tasty kick, it's 2-0. The Flyers are clearly the hungrier team, the more aggressive team. They're backing one another up and supporting the puck and making plays like this. Luke Shen, full march for just getting the puck on net. And again, Darcy Kemper coughs up a juicy, medium, rare rebound right to Claude Giroux. Yeah, and again, you know what, Billy, I too, I love that Voracek goes around the back of the net and he used uh, Jonas Brodeen. He just did not let him take the puck, moves it to Shen, great shot. And Giroux, he never heard the ping because it hit the mat. The matting under the pipe in the uh, inside of the net. What a goal. Great job by the Flyers to start this game. But Chris, do the Flyers not look a step quicker oh, yes. down there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're moving better. They're doing everything crisper. The passing's better. It's been a great start. Shen and Voracek getting assist. Here's Spurgeon a shot. Emery looks behind him. But that puck is caught up in his equipment. Enough to get a whistle in the crowd here. A Bronx cheer because that's the first shot on goal for the Wild. The Flyers had the first eight shots in this game well yeah and, and, and i think billy mentioned it too kemper had been pulled a four out of his last five games here at home so the difficulties continue for him look Good. at this goal again though what a great play by shen just get the shot through rebounds don't get uh, bigger than that one billy you said it oh. uh you see as they come and drew's gonna feast on that those two guys voracek and drew are just on fire right now and they're easily the highest scoring duo in the nhl for teammates scandela shot score simple point shot with traffic in front it gets through and the wild are on the board now it's two to one boy this looked like it it got air under it part way to the net it was a good shot from the point but it was deflected in front, I think, by Koivu, who was standing there. One way or the other, Ray Emery had no chance on it. It was a blast. Still trying to figure out if it was deflected, but it doesn't really matter. This is a challenge now for the Flyers to continue playing with the same energy that they had before this goal was scored. Well, the Wild sure to get a bump from that goal as they go to work in the offensive zone. The rider to Matt Cook and back around to the other side of the ice. Elmar there and he'll find Le Cavalier. Now Vandebelde. Good work by this line to get out of the zone. Now they go to the attack. Vandebelde dropping it back. Elmar's shot or pass was blocked off. Vandebelde trying to get the puck back. But instead, it's Charlie Coyle for the Wild. And they'll move the puck ahead to Cook. Cook run at by Vandebelde. Belmar and Belmar. They try to give him a run whenever they can because Cook certainly does that to the Flyers. Now the puck goes ahead. The feed is to Simmons. Simmons a shot. That one sails wide. All the way out to the point. Kept in but taken back by Kyle Brodziak. And he springs Parisi. Parisi cutting to the middle. Back for Brodziak. And he did not get any stick on that shot. And the Flyers now in the counter rush. Strike to Simmons. Simmons tried to set her. It's blocked off by Scandella. Pulled yeah. behind the net though. The Flyers jump out of here. Simmons in front checked as he went to take a shot. And now the counter rush. For the Wild as they move up to center, Ryan Carter 
And the shot, but right there is Coburn to deflect it out of play. 8.36 remaining in period number one. It's 2-1 Philadelphia. All it is. And we certainly want to second that motion as Christmas approaches. Happy holidays to everyone out there. Flyers with a 2-1 lead. And it's time for our Jeep trivia question of the game. Simple one. How many times have the Minnesota Wild appeared in the playoffs? Five times, seven times, or nine times? A franchise that uh, has uh, been here back in Minnesota. You know that answer? 14 yeah, I do. Did it's in you? my notes. Okay. But I wouldn't have known it. Yeah. They've been here 14 years. Well, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yes. That would just I be a either. guess on my part. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we could say they've been in the uh, class a couple times in the last couple years, but we're not giving away anything there. Here's a shot on the setup from behind that by Drew, but it was blocked. Being told that R.J. Umberger is now getting an assist on the Couturier goal. So... Now he's the third away from RJ at 7-16. Wild got the last one, though, as they're within one. Drew poking that puck into traffic in the corner. Raffle trying to dig it out of there. Coburn has his man tied up. The Wild will jam it around to the other side of the ice. Voracek races over, takes the hit from Suter to make the play. And now Giroux bunts it out into center. Raffle will back end, but wait to Brodeen. And now Suter ahead. You'll hear those two names a lot. They are on the ice a ton. Here's Zucker into the slot. Vanek tried to pass it back, and Umberger blocked that pass. Flyers cleared all the way down, and this will be icing against Philadelphia. Well, what a night Claude Giroux had two nights ago in Winnipeg against the Jets. It included getting a stick up high in the face. Accidental or not, it happened. Shaken up, went to the bench. Sticks knocked out of his hand. Just about put through the glass by a guy that weighs 260 pounds, Dustin Bufflin. But he was not deterred. Had as much energy in overtime as he had at the start of the game. And just kept on coming, including pushing Dustin Bufflin off the puck. That led to the winning goal by Jake Voracek. He was the like hunter a, and the hunted in that game. David versus Goliath in a lot of ways in that game, Bill. You're right. And what an effort by Drew. I thought that was a, just a tremendous heart and soul game for him. That's nothing new from the Flyers captain. He has shown that ability. Nobody wants to win more than Claude Giroux. Sometimes maybe even he tries too hard when he wants to win so badly, but you certainly want that quality in your captain. Flyers have that with number 28. Scandella, who got credit for that goal for the Wild. No deflection seen by the off-ice officials. Spurgeon and Parisi, the assist. Scandell out there now with Spurgeon, and they play catch. And now Scandella the pass ahead. Turning back with it is Vanek. The big acquisition by the Wild in the offseason really got off to a slow start. He's picked it up a little bit of late as he's moved up on a line with Parisi. And then they puck to the Philadelphia line, and Charlie Coyle will get it deep. Emery stops it into the quarter for Luch, and he was checked. Lawton back into skates behind the net. And now it bounces free to Wayne Simmons. And he'll lob one out to the neutral zone over his Brodine to get to it. Suter, who averages just about 30 minutes a game. Got it into the Philadelphia zone. Emery has to wait till it gets into the traffic right and jabs it to the corner. Bounces back behind the net. Here's Coyle getting it in front. Need a rider. Stop. Got to hit the post. And now it bounces out to Braden Chen. One save in there for Emery. Then oh. the puck hit the post. Oh. And then it went wide. And the Flyers survive and still have a lead, but barely. <laughs> Unbelievable play by Ray Emery. And there didn't look like there was much room after the first save. Check it out. <laughs> Niederreiter with a one-move pad save. Ray sealed off the post. And Niederreiter, Niederreiter tried to get it between his pad and the post. Turned out to be no room. What a save. That is a very, very good play by Emery. He ended up getting that glove up on the first one, Billy. And then the quick play down low along that post area. Good effort by Emery. We know that. He never gives up on a puck. No panic in him either. No, he's been around the block yeah. for sure in this league. What do you mean? He's the youngest goalie. That's he's the a younger guy, too. that's right. <laughs> There's Koivu moving up. Koivu is shot that goes off a stick and then into the safety netting. 5.49, I'm heading in the first. Flyers lead by one. Minnesota, you're having a look here at Rob Zepp. Getting his first NHL win the other night. This is our Chevy player profile. You can see the 30-year-old from Scarborough, Ontario. And what a night it was for him in Winnipeg two nights back. 
outstanding job. He ends up getting the save of the game here, and really, the, I think the, the, the save that gave the Flyers a chance to win this game. At the end of the second period, wins it in overtime. Uh, what, a, what a great experience for this guy. I was so happy for him, as was everybody else involved with the Flyers. It's a great story, guys. Uh, one of the best of the year, and I'll tell you what, what a nice guy, too, uh, to hearing him after the game. I asked him specifically, I said, does this feel like he got to the top of Everest? And he said, yes, it does. It, it really does feel like it was a journey, and I, I've reached the, the pinnacle of it. So what a, what a great story and a great kid, and, uh, and nice to see him win. About a 14-year climb to the top of that mountain, and uh, he got there, and he got a win, and it was certainly a big part of it. I don't think there's anybody in that locker room who thinks the Fires would have won the game if he doesn't make that save late in the second period. Back to action here tonight, though. Here's Zucker moving up. Passing to the slot. Onaville a shot, and that's snared by Emery, and he'll hang on. Well, how about keeping the holiday fun going? You can enjoy a ticket, plus a Flyers ugly sweater t-shirt, all starting at $50. This is available for the first home game of the new year, and that's on January the 6th against Ottawa. So you can grab this deal online right now at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com. Wow, there it is already. All the way here in the Midwest. You know, I love those things. I do. They're great. Yeah, I'm going to wear it tomorrow night. <laughs> that puck dribbles into Henry, and he covers what? up. I want pictures. What, what, what size? You can was tweet it? that picture it's out. Big. It's big, Billy. Okay. <laughs> a little gathering here around the Flyers net. To, you know, if you're going to see a gathering in this one and you want to guess a wild player's about to be either Matt Cook or Stu Bickle. This was Stu Bickle. See how it started. Pretty hard work by Minnesota on the draw. This is one of the reasons Bickle was put in the lineup. Look at Pierre Edouard Belmar, though, digging in. I looked at Belmar's numbers when he played in Sweden. One year he had 113 penalty minutes. I said, what about this year? Did you turn into a goon? He said it was all about this, and he pointed at his 31 goals in 40-some games. He said, I had a bullseye on me, and I was going to push back. If somebody wanted to test me, I'll push back all the time. And that was kind of an example of it there, pushing back against Bickle. Uh, he is a guy right there. You see him having a chat with Luke Shen. He's always talking the game. He has a lot of energy. That he does, and he spent a lot of it fixing up a house that he just bought. He just bought a house with his fiance before he signed with the Flyers. He fixed it up all summer. I said, wow, you're a tradesman. You, you know how to do that stuff? He said, no. I said, how did you learn? YouTube. YouTube? Yep, woodworking, tiling, the whole really? world. Wow. He's, he just learned it he's, on YouTube. He's clearly coachable. Well, he hasn't been back for a while, so he's not sure the house is still standing. <laughs> but <laughs> Bouncing puck in on Emery. He'll get that to Luke Shannon. Now McDonald up the wall and a touch pass for Couturier. Miss Umberger, though, in the middle. And here's Suter getting it back. You two afflicted with the mumps. Missed a couple of games. Played 30 minutes or so in his first game back. As they try to settle the puck, Vanlin will get it out to the point. Falk, here's a shot. It went wide as they look for redirection in front. Now Couturier, his first try, knocked down, second try to spun it to center. And the Wild have it back. Flyers not nearly as sharp as they were in that early part of the game. The Flyers really had a chance, I thought, to bury this club. The Wild lacking a little confidence right now. They're one, two, and two in their last five, but Flyers didn't really put them away, and now the Wild starting to push back. Here's Cook around behind the Philadelphia net. Centered it, and it deflected and went behind the net. And everybody wasn't sure where it was. Flyers get it back. Reed is checked. Wild on the puck. Scandella back to Spurgeon. And now it's Scandella. He'll wind up, take the shot, and it's blocked by Umberger out to center. The Flyers going to try to change. Scandella jumps on the puck quickly. Let his pass into the zone. Knocked down by Lawton and cleared out to center ice. The Flyers all of a sudden are making low percentage plays as they try to come up ice through the neutral zone. And last three or four times have just turned the puck over. Now they're going to be short-handed. As a tripping call. Signal. Chris Lee and Tim Peel are your referees in this game. Tim Peel with the call. Philadelphia number 49, two minutes to trip. So Scott Lawton is the guilty party. Minor penalty, Philadelphia number 49. Mm, that Lawton. was it. Stick his leg out. Yes, his heel. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, his stick's in there. Yeah, oh, that was his stick, stick, wasn't it? Yeah. So Watton sits. And the Wild with the game's first power play. 
Two units that have struggled. Wild power play down near the bottom at 26. A little bit better though of late. As they've been 7 for 23, over 30% in their last seven games. Fires penalty killing two has been better of late. They've killed off 12 of their last 13 man down situations. So units that have struggled, Bill, but they've been on the upswing. There's Coyle. His pass off of a flyer back deeper into the Minnesota zone. Now they'll move it ahead. Parisi trying to drop that to Koivu. Drew nearly came away with it. Now it's Suter. Brings it cross ice. First to it is Nick Schultz. Had to Couturier. He'll turn with it. And Raffle was going to the bench. So that one goes past him, but all the way down. Axes is clear. The Flyers will get fresh legs out on the ice. Well, that's a confident move by Sean Couturier. It looked like he was turning it back into play, but he just used his power and his body to shield and then to clear. Koivu lost the puck just inside the Philadelphia line, so the Wild have to go back out. Start all over again. 1-10 remaining on the man advantage. Suter to Koivu. And now Parisi takes a hit from Shen as he plays the puck in. Couturier to Grossman. Luke Shen after it. He'll try to wind up the boards, but he was checked. There's Hustle after it. Couturier spilled. Grossman back to the other side of the ice. Turning and firing that one out is Luke Shen. A good play there in the spin move. Now to 45 seconds remaining in the Minnesota power play. Suter waiting as the wild change players. He sends Vanek into the zone. Vanek across ice. Nick Schultz trying to play this. Niederreiter riding him, and the puck goes back out. Candela has it across ice. Virgin. And now back across ice. They're set up. The pass in front tipped away. Coburn reaching for it, but now it's Niederreiter. He'll bank it back out to Granlin. Granlin in front of redirection by Vanek goes wide. What a goal like that against Philadelphia in the first meeting. Puck back across ice. And the tip there by Niederreiter ends up behind the net. Niederreiter looking for it. He's marked by Nick Schultz. They tie each other up. And we play on. According to the guys in striped shirts. That puck was free. Niederreiter finally gets his grand out of the box. Jumps lot and fires back to full strength. This pass knocked down and the Flyers will skate up with it. So the Flyers kill off the Minnesota power play now. Try to... Get some offensive zone time as Lawton has the puck. Lawton tried to set up, but that goes off a skate. And the Wild will move back with it. Here's Cook. And he'll play it in, but from his side of the red line, so icing is called. So after this game, it's the Christmas break. Three days off. Fires back in action on the 27th. Down in Nashville, Peter Laviolette's crew. And they've had a good first half of the season. The Flyers and the Predators from Nashville. As you see the breakdown, our coverage beginning at 7.30. It's on to Arizona, then Colorado, Carolina, New Jersey, and then finally after that, they'll reacquaint themselves with the Wells Fargo Center. Might need their GPS is set up for that. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, but if they can get through this trip and hold their own, then they'll like their chances. Final the next 13 play after play that, our home. Or a check cross ice pass tipped. And Donald able to gather it, gets it to LeCavier, who backhands it wide. So LeCavier taking a shift with... Giroux and Bora check that shot missed by Kepper off the deflection but the Wild able to recover they don't clear as Sprite kept it in momentarily now moved on out and Brodziak will push it into Philadelphia zone Sprite back over skates but the Flyers are there in good shape and they'll move it ahead Borchek couldn't reach that pass Suter has it back 27 seconds in the period Koivu just chipping that one in Sprite is back for it it's McDonald, whose pass is knocked down by Koivu. Goes back out, Scandella. Can he get it to Parisi behind the net? He and Strike both go to the ice. Koivu pumps it free to the other side of the ice. Flyers on that. McDonald ahead, a three on two with the Flyers. Six seconds remaining in the period. Here's Lawton back across ice, but it goes off a stick. And the Wild able to clear to center, and that's how the first period comes to an end. So the Flyers get the first two, including another tally from Claude Giroux. Turier had the first one. Scandella replies for the Wild. 2-1 Flyers after 20 minutes. Tonight's Flyers Wild first period was brought to you by Kia. To learn more, visit Kia.com. And by Papa John. The day after the Flyers win and score three or more goals, get 50% off your online order using promo code FLYERS at PapaJohns.com. Downstairs we go as Chris Terrian sat to chat with Sean Gutierrez.
Coots, uh, a really good start for you guys again. Did you feel he carried a lot of the momentum from the Winnipeg game right in here to Minnesota tonight? Yeah, I think so. We want to get uh, off to a good start. I mean, last game before Christmas break, and uh, it's it's a huge game. We we, we needed to come out uh, strong, and uh, now we got to maintain that for 40 more minutes. You were able to push a defense back on that uh, on the play that you made coming in across the blue line on Suter and Brodine. Did you think RJ got it, or were you pretty sure right away that it hit a skate and it was your goal? Uh, well, I saw it hit uh, someone's skate. I wasn't sure, but uh, I just tried to put it back door, and uh, I knew the goalie was following me, so uh, lucky bounce, and I'll take it. Which thanks very much. Thank you. Couturier with 10 points in his last 11 games. John Boric, Al Morgan here next. Intermission Live, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. And the nice first period action from Minnesota. Flyers with a lead after one period of play. Let's look at the numbers, courtesy of the Rothman Institute at Jefferson. 8-7 the shots. Flyers took the first eight shots. The Wild the last seven. That's sort of how the period broke down. And there is how the scoring broke down. Sean Couturier and Claude Drew giving the Flyers a 2-0 lead before Marco Scandella got one back for Minnesota. And the plus-minus column, Luke Shen and Andrew McDonald, partners on the blue line, both plus two in that first period. And the shutdown guys, Brodeen and Suter for Minnesota, minus two. Off the draw, we're underway in period number two is the Wild right into the zone. Pominville backhander and Emery the save. And down goes Pominville. Helmet comes off in the corner. Penalty upcoming against Philadelphia. And as Raffle touches the puck, there's the whistle. And now, a rather emotional gathering as they are after Nick Grossman, who came into contact with that guy, Jason Pominville. And Pominville looked like he got the worst of it. But now the Wild will get the best of it as the Flyers will be shorthanded. I guess the only unless would be unless there was a roughing Go call two for on the wild for going at Grossman after this play on the bottom right. Just looked like he rode Pominville into the boards. Wow. His stick was high and his arms were high. I think that's why he ended up with the penalty. Plus Pominville's helmet popping off made it look even worse. The, yeah. op the optics weren't good. No. Just that little follow through from Nick yeah. probably uh, might have been a little, call. little too big of a hit, guys. So, second power play of the game for Minnesota. And they win the draw. They try to tie this game. Suter uh, behind the net. It's kept away from Parisi by Raven Coburn. Pominville plays the other point. It's a back but Coburn knocks that down and clears. Two good plays by Braden Coburn in that sequence. And the Flyers get the puck down the ice. Suter will start back up. Get to Charlie Coyle. And now it's Coyle up the middle, off to Pominville and back to Suter. They're set up. A little wrist shot blocked off in front. That was Coburn again. And now Couturier will clear it the rest of the way. Good shift from Coburn. He goes over to the bench now as the Flyers the new defense pair out there. Koivu moving up his right wing feed into the skates of Coyle. And he's checked by Lawton. The puck, though, kept in by Pominville. Drops it off for Suter. Quick shot blocked in front by McDonald. Cleared up but not out by Luke Shen. Wild have it. He's still over a minute remaining in the power play. Here's Koivu. On the goal line to Parisi. They switch positions. Parisi had up looking at cross ice. Instead of pass to Koivu, he is checked. Parisi now worked down by McDonald. He gets the puck back, and now they shot for the point. By Pominville is snared by Emery, and he'll squeeze it. Well, the Flyers will take shots like that. Ray Emery will all power play long. The Wild were really looking for the seam pass through the middle. You see on the right of your screen, Jason Pominville. They kept trying to get it to him. Finally, they had to go around to get it to him instead of going through the Flyers penalty killers. And when you go around, there's not much of a screen usually in front. So Ray Emery saw that all the way. Flyers win the draw as Giroux got it back. Can they clear? Yes. Coburn got it up the boards past Scandell and all the way down. Claude Giroux has been so good on draws this year in general, but especially with his team shorthanded. We told you about that earlier. The Flyers been good on the kill. Go back into the game before that, and it's actually now 13 of their last 14. As the puck here for Vanek is behind him. And Umberger there, and they'll send it all the way down. Giroux will be the first to it. So you got the 
Ingo on Spurgeon, but the Wild get the puck away from him. And one last rush with the bad advantage. Ten seconds remaining. On the power play, Vanek across ice. The shot. Save Emery off of Grandland. He had trouble controlling it. Was able to jump on top of it, and he'll take the whistle. The Flyers at one point, guys, is looking from uh, the shot clock at an 8-2 lead. It's now 10 to 8-foot uh, Minnesota. You see a quick play here across. Grandland getting the slot shot on net here. Emery kind of standing up. The Unsure what was going to happen with that if it was a pass back opportunity. Niederreiter drives the net. Good save by Ray Emery. He's been sharp in this game. So the really, Chris, the Flyers have not had a shot in a long yeah, time in was, this game. It, it was eight nothing. It was eight nothing. Yep. Yeah, the there last you go. Ten shots now belong to the Wild. So they do need once they get this power play killed to get back to spending some time in the offensive zone. Ray Emery has seen plenty of the Wild in his career. That's where the Flyers have been at their best in this game, is deep in the wild yeah. zone. The cycle has been there. I mean, the good work supporting the puck, generating scoring chances early. And then the Flyers got a little fancy in the neutral zone and weren't as efficient getting the puck to that deep area of the ice, that deep offensive zone area of the ice. That's what they have to try to get back to. A little delay here. Perhaps it's the penalty clock time. In fact, it is, as they're now adjusting it. It's been down to three seconds on the clock for Nick Grossman. Now they've put a four up there, but they will get it straight. Good peel over there. And exactly what he wants. Four seconds apparently remaining instead of three. So he just spent a minute. How about a second? <laughs> Flyers win the draw. And here's McDonald backhanding. And he got it out to center as it bounced off of Suter. So that takes care of the power play. Grossman out of the box. Flyers are back to full strength. As this puck goes wide of the net, so it's icing against Minnesota. They'll get an offensive zone draw with the Flyers and try to create some offense. Craig Berube really evened out the ice time for his team. The fourth line actually got more average ice time than the third line in that first period. The D-man, all six of them, pretty well on a straight rotation. Third game in four nights, although there's a difference when you have a day off before the third game in four nights. It's a lot tougher if you play a game, have a day off, and then play on back-to-back -back nights. And it was a complete day off for the Flyers. There's a takedown in the corner, but no penalty called as Belmar was thrown to the ice. Rodine is met by LeCavalier. He grabs a hold of Vinny, and he's still one-handed that puck out into the slot, but it's taken by Ryan Carter, and he the beeline the other way. There's it wide, and then the shot handcuffed Emery some. He made the save, and it's cleared out of harm's way by the Flyers. Flyers trying to change here. Spurgeon looks up ice. He misses Pominville, though, with that, so this is icing again against the Wild. A look here at Mike Yao, Minnesota Wild coach, her fourth year in in the uh, in Minnesota. Here he's been here, coming over from Pittsburgh. My save here by Ray Emery, quick one again, down low. One thing teams, you talk to other teams, but where they like to try to go, they try to like to make uh, they like to make Ray Emery try to move as much as possible. Ray again, he's been sharp in this game. They throw pucks from anywhere at him. Flyers have the puck here. Wayne Simmons in his shot, and that one glances off of. Pepper and wide. Might not have been going on that anyhow. Now Simmons back after behind the cage. Braden Shen in there. He hits the deck. Buck underneath him. Simmons now knocked to his knees as well. And they may be calling a penalty here. For the Flyers playing the puck with the glove and putting the glove on top of the puck. I think that's what we're going to get. Braden Shen will go to the box. Well, if you're still looking for that big gift that's really going to wow somebody, the Santa Sack Captain's Pack includes four tickets plus a flyer stick autographed by Flyers Captain Giroux, Simmons, and Strite. And you can shop right now at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com. Well, Braden Shen gets the gate. Tim Peel is the guy that made the call. Try and watch where Braden Shen's hands are. Wow. Barely touched it. The Wild right to work in the shot. Emery to save off of Parisi. And so now three power plays for the Wild. None for the Flyers in this game. Emery might be called upon to come up big here in the next sequence. You don't see that call made very often. No, they've called it more the last year or two. And if you put your glove on top of that puck at any point, they're going to call it now. Uh, you know, Braden tried to be coy about it and discreet, but I think he did 
pull it underneath him and then tried to shove it out so the Flyers would get control. And they spotted it. Here's Pominville to Parisi. Now Koivu, the touch pass back out. Suter, cross ice, the shot, score! Pominville didn't get all of it. And then it may have changed direction. It found its way in. And the Wild had tied the game at two on a power play goal. Well, I guess turnabout is fair play. The Flyers scored a goal that went in off the Minnesota skate. And Pominville certainly didn't get all of this one. I thought it had gone in off Nick Schultz, but apparently it hit one of the Minnesota players in front. Right there, Charlie Coyle. Yeah, that's going to be Coyle's goal. I saw it going towards the net too, Billy, and I didn't know what it hit. It, it kind of looked like a floater. He duffed it at first, and it just bounced off Coyle. Really no chance at all for Emery. I mean, you're thinking that shot's going to be coming about 90 miles an hour. It's Charlie Coyle's goal on a, a double flop. Bad shot flopped off of Coyle's leg as well. Coyle will take it. He's gone 26 consecutive games without a goal, and he's a guy who it's uh, serious ice time up front is a top nine forward for this club. So he will take that goal and this game is tied. Quick shot by the Flyers goes wide. Flyers have not had a shot on goal in this game or had not at least since the 9.33 mark of the first. They've added one to their total here in the second. So they broke that up at one point, but uh, they went well over 10 minutes without a shot. This is icing against Minnesota. But the good news is the game is tied at two. So plenty of time for the Flyers to get their offense going now. The Flyers looked so dominant the first half of the first period. They came out energized, looking the same as they did in the third period in Winnipeg. And as soon as they stopped getting pucks deep in the Minnesota zone, it all started to turn the other way. Penalties haven't helped either. They win the draw here. Shot McDonald, save made, rebound, and the Cavalieri got to that to ram it home as Spurgeon was trying to take it out of harm's way. Now the scrum in the corner. His fourth line again for the Flyers. Trying to create some offense. Spurgeon chips that one out to the neutral zone. Now Niederreiter will send it in on Emery. Luke Shen back for Philadelphia. Rink wide feed was a rocket pass that could not be handled. By Vandevelde. And now Minnesota misfires and another icing call against the Wild. So. They have not been afraid to try those stretch passes, and several resulted in icing call. So if the Flyers can start to gain some traction in the faceoff circle, they struggled there in the first period as well. But Minnesota has given them ample opportunities on icing calls for faceoffs deep in the Minnesota zone. Couturier will take this one against Coyle. And Couturier wins it to Coburn. Coburn wrists it wide of the net. It bounces almost out in front, but Coyle is right there. Sends it off the skate to the neutral zone. Nick Schultz sends it right back in, but from his side of the red line. So this is icing against Philadelphia. Gives us a chance to tell you about the orange line after Flyers coverage tonight. Bob Zepp saw his NHL dream come true the other night. Visit with him. Plus, yeah, our analysts explain why Jake Voracek has been virtually unstoppable this season. And the newly minted Hall of Famer Peter Forsberg shares why the Flyers to hold a special place in his heart. Watch the Orange Line presented by Bradford Whitewater Heaters tonight at 10 o'clock right here on the Comcast Network. Flyers gain control but kick the puck. It goes to Granlin whose shot is blocked. And now the Flyers have it back. Umberger from the red line and guiding it into the Minnesota zone. After two and goes around to the corner. Bounces off of Schultz. Back out. Couturier's shot. To make that read and the save made by Kemper as Flyers trying to get traffic in front. But, uh, unable to really get enough to make it tough on Kemper. But that started with RJ Umberger doing a good job of getting the puck through the neutral zone, chipping it in, going and forcing it, and the puck ending up back up top for that shot. I mean, that starts with getting pucks in deep and getting on them. Now, it's Couture who took that shot. Reed was standing right next to him. So Couturier, who has one of the two goals for the Flyers. Trying to get them back on top. Niederreiter is checked. Braden Shen to it. Got away from him, but Nick Grossman will send it around behind for Lawton. Lawton giving plenty of room behind the net, but nothing really opening up in front. He'll play it back out for strike. 
And it's tipped away. And Wild get it. Matt Cook in the middle. Ian Ryder will send it into the Philadelphia zone. Right first back, but he swarmed upon. And the Wild get the puck back. Cook from Ian Ryder. Written by Grossman. And now it's Lawton. Lobbing a cross ice pass in center. Simmons able to find it. And it winded into the Minnesota zone. Kemper stops it there and gives to Scandella. And pass ahead for Coyle. Coyle moving well and across the line. His pass, though, is off the mark going back the other way. And the Flyers have it. Raffle ahead. Here's Voracek. Voracek into the zone. Voracek looking for Giroux. It's blocked. Giroux goes careening into the boards. Gets back up to find the puck on his stick. Gets it to McDonald. McDonald is shot wide. Bounces out the other side. It was kept away from Voracek and cleared all the way down by the Wild. This will be another icing. And Jake Voracek had an opportunity to shoot that puck coming in. Giroux driving the net. He elected to waited a little bit too long, guys, coming across the blue line. That last sequence down the ice. These guys together have been so good. Voracek and Giroux, as good as there's been of anybody in the league. It's hard to question Jake when he decides not to shoot and decides yeah. to thread the needle because he's done such a good job. And Craig berube has been after his guys to shoot, shoot, shoot. And we've seen Darcy Kemper give up some nice rebounds. So never a bad idea to take a shot. Jake just decided he was going to thread one that time. Took one there. He glanced off of something in front of wide. Now Giroud a raffle for a shot. And Kemper able to make the save. Now Voracek steals the puck, but he did so illegally, according to the guys in striped shirts. Voracek disagrees, holding the call. Another Minnesota power play when we come back. Time to have a look at our Geico quote of the game. And I think uh, Mark Strait has pretty much hit this nail on the head right there. It's, it's talking about Rob Zepp and that great uh, win the other night, his effort. And uh, you know what? I think when you look at Rob Zepp, I mean, it's, a, it's one of the great, great stories, I think, in the NHL this year. And I think it, 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 true, it does capture the true essence of what sport is all about. And a uh, guy really pursuing his dream, and I think everybody recognizes that. You never know when you're going to get your opportunity. As the Wild get an opportunity here on the power play, their fourth of the game. Voracek off for a holding call that he really disputed. Here's the shot, Pommetville, and the save made by Emery. Go back and take a look at that penalty one more time. Charlie Coyle had the puck in front, and Jake Voracek, it looked worse than it was. He just gave Coyle a push, really. And J.J., during a break, you brought up a good point. If it was going to lead to a scoring chance, you know, and you're going to make a mistake as a rep, you might as well make it that way. Yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with that. You can see that one angle is a very good look of what the referee saw. And it almost looked like he grabbed him, but then the other angle shows that he did not. Right. But, of course, he didn't have that benefit. So the Wild with a mad advantage. For Luna Parisi. It's a big kill for the Flyers, obviously, as they try to keep this game tied. Suter. Goes to Pominville. Pominville back around behind the net. The centering pass made it to the side of the cage. Emery could not cover it up. Now they swat away behind the net. And the Wild win that battle and get it back to Suter across for Parisi. Parisi back out to Suter. And now Parisi, the one-timer, and that one takes off, finds Glass. Suter keeps it in, right back across to Parisi. At the halfway point of the power play, Koivu getting in front. Emery finds the puck, puts the glove on top of it, puts a halt to things, and then Coyle, Couturier get their sticks up. And Schultz arrives. Not in my house, said Sean Couturier. It's my front porch, my goaltender, and you're not allowed. I don't think Charlie Coyle would really want to mix it up with Ray Emery either. Ray Emery's kind of giving him the stare down right now in front of me. And uh, Ray is a tough cookie as <laughs> Brayton Holtby in Washington may be able to tell you. Yes, yeah, no kidding. Nothing apparently called here. No harm, no foul, easy for me to say. Shots the chops there, but no problem. So the face-off two rays left. Wild steer that across the slot as Vanek is after. Flyers get there. A little indecision there between Grossman and Luke Shen, but Grossman eventually gets it ahead, and the Flyers move up at a two-on-two. Two. Belmar will fire that one in. Lawton was up with him. That puck sits in the corner, and Scandella, who's being bothered by Lawton, now finds Vanek. Vanek to Spurgeon. A left wing feed, Niederreiter. He's 
Giving some rough treatment to Grossman. Hard on Spurgeon as well, and the puck cleared up and all the way down. Boy, Nick Grossman That's playing with an edge here tonight. It's that one pane of glass right in front of Chris down there. That's where he smushes guys. That's exactly where he got Pominville when he picked up the penalty. There's Umberger causing the Wild some trouble on the penalty kill and the hit there by Belmars. I mean, the crowd thought it was from behind and should have warranted a penalty, but that's not forthcoming. Belmars staying with it. Finally, the Wild have it. And it's set in by Suter. Final seconds of the power play. Coburn will clear all the way down as Warcheck exits the box. So the Flyers kill it off. It's still a tie hockey game here. Couple shots for the Wild. Unable to get their first lead of the game. Coming up with speed here, though, is Brodziak. Brodziak's shot deflected away by McDonald. Voracek and Carter after it. Goes into the corner. Brodziak. Has his pocket picked by Stripe, and his pass off the skate of LeCavalier. And it's gathered by Ryan Carter, who went to camp this year with the Devils. Couldn't crack their lineup. Ended up coming to Minnesota. Puck sent in. Takes a aye, aye. right in front. And diving was McDonald. It bounced off of him and just wide. As the Wild seemed to see that puck, and Emery was struggling to get back into the cage. Flyers still haven't gotten their bearings here. Cook with the puck. Cook centering. Goes past Coyle and all the way out to center. Minnesota skated much better, guys, in this second period. And, of course, they've had a lot of power play time. The Flyers have been taxed a little bit with their penalty killers, but certainly better jump here for the Wild than the Flyers this period. Really started halfway through that first period. As McDonald gets to the puck here for Philadelphia. Head for Lawton. Lawton caught up, and that play ends up being offside at the Minnesota line. We pass the midpoint of regulation time. Have a look at Andy McDonald right here. He gets the independence. Blue Cross, fearless play of the hockey game. A little wraparound right here takes a bad turn on Ray Emery. And what a great job right there by Andrew McDonald. Slides out, preventing that goal for sure going in. That is the Independence Blue Cross fearless play. It's a good hockey play by McDonald. And again, good recognition, staying with his man, coming back in the D zone. And even though when you get a bad bounce, you go back to the front of the net, good things are going to happen for you. Ray Emery had a long way to go. He was directly behind his net. He got such a good jump on the puck. Right. And... He had to take the long way around the post to get back. He was not going to be there. <laughs> McDonald, not on time anyway. <laughs> exactly. McDonald, as Chris said, a huge play there. Keeping this game tied. Now McDonald trying to untie it at the other end, but his hook shot from the line is smothered by Minnesota. And then finally Spurgeon clears it out. It hits Luke Shen, and now a race for the puck. Carter beaten to it by Shen. They say that puck was still in the zone. Here's Vanek, a shot. Save, Emery. That was very close to being offside. Emery with a big save, but the Wild still pursuing the puck. Now Watton up the wall. Simmons, slight hesitation. Scandella in from the point, gets to it. Carter back around behind the net. A collision at the side of the Philadelphia cage as Vanek was involved with the Flyers' have it. Here's Braden Shen. Cross ice Simmons. Back in the middle for Shen. His shot blocked. Comes back to him. He's got room. Takes the shot again. Save made by Kemper. And Simmons plays it back to the line. Keeping it in, barely was Reed. Behind the net, Lawton. Lawton comes away with the puck and finds Schultz for a shot that ricochets and goes right through the slot. Coburn in from the other point. Swoops to the puck, but then is stripped of it behind the net by Spurgeon. He sends it up the wall, and there's Umberger into the slot. Coburn on his way back toward the point, found the puck coming his way, but couldn't do much with it. Now Spurgeon ahead, and there's Vanek into the middle, intercepted by Schultz. Sloppiness from the wild here of late as the Flyers try to Get some offense generated. Here's Scandella. That pass flagged down by Pominville. And the and a long time Buffalo Sabres sends it up into the crowd from the red line. Let's take a look at our Wells Fargo check of the game. And this guy's got a few of them this year. Nicholas Grossman introducing ouch. Jared Spurgeon to the boards. Yes, JJ, ouch. Mm. It's going to hurt right up against that partition ah, as well, know. too. The, that red part of the boards. And. Way to finish his check, a good one by Grossman for the Wells Fargo check of the game. He got on the bus to the arena tonight with a whole bunch of packages. I don't know. Maybe did some shopping. I don't know. But the bottom line is, he doesn't look like he's in the holiday spirit here tonight. Got an edge to his game. Angry. Well, it should be pointed out that all of the guys left their gifts on the bus. 
There's a pass in front from Grossman. It is tipped on goal by Giroux, but the save made by Kemper. And don't worry, family members who are watching. <laughs> I think there are Christmas gifts coming home with a lot of the players. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guys with a day off yesterday. Look at Giroux again. What a great redirection that was. Yeah, it started a pinball between Kemper's pads. Just didn't have enough on it. Yeah. Kemper had that five hole, hole open for Giroux, just not able to find the hole, uh, find the spot. There's a steal by the Wild. Zucker moving up. Speedy winger lost control, but the Wild get the puck back out to Suter. This pass tipped, but they'll gather, and the Wild continue to control in the Philadelphia zone. Brodine turning with it. And then back out to the line, Suter. Flyers keeping the wall to the outside here, but they continue to control the puck in the offensive zone. Zucker across. Brodine, wrist shot, batted, and it goes wide. On the go behind the net. Drag down, tried to center it out in front. Comes back out, Brodine. Now to Suter. Right back to Brodine. He's got control, and he'll backhand it. Amonville trying to move it behind the net. Cut off. Nice play there by Strait. He gets to Giroux, and the Flyers will finally leave the zone. Drew the right wing feed to Voracek. Voracek at the end of his shift got the shot off at the save made by Kemper. Rafa will turn it back the other way. Cavalier turns and fires it wide. It bounces all the way out toward the point. McDonald keeps it in. Now the Cavalier worked on by Brodeen. Flyers have been able to execute the line change. And the Cavalier tried to work that puck deeper, but it's neither right or the other way. He was stopped at the Philadelphia line by McDonald, who has been playing a lot in this game. He's been playing well. He led the Flyers a nice time in the first period. And Andrew McDonald. 6.25 remaining in the second period. Tied at two. Flyers got the first two. Wilder had the last two. Big hit by Vandeveld. Is he not going down? Now the Flyers an outlet pass. They were looking to spring Le Cavalier, but the Wild intercept. Played back in by Granlin. McDonald after it. Chops it away from Cook. Bowen is in from the point to get that puck back out. Vanek, a shot goes wide. Didn't have much on it. And Luke Shen to the puck. Ahead. And he's at Belmar, but he could not hang on to the puck. The Flyers need another change. Now it's ahead to Vanek. Vanek giving some room here. Vanek all the way across was behind Parisi. And now it's Couturier charging back the other way. John Couturier hit across the Minnesota line. Trying to maneuver on Scandella. Umberger gets to the puck. He's thumped. Now Reed to Couturier. Couturier turning with it. Trying to fight off a check, trying to get away from Scandella. Back behind the net, Umberger centered it, but Reed was well marked. And the Wild cleared the zone. Coburn back to get it. Coburn with the pass, and Nick Schultz hustles it up across the red line, bounces it wide of Kemper. Cleared to the line, not out. Strike kept it in, but then sent right back up and out by Minnesota. And the Wild. Get control as we tick down to five minutes remaining in this second period. Shots are 17-16 in favor of Minnesota. They usually outshoot their opponents, although not as much of late, but for the season that's certainly been the case. Here's Simmons looking for the return feed. It went off of him in on Kemper. And they turn it back around behind the net. Simmons tried to catch up to it, but Scandella had other ideas. Lawton chopping at it. Braden Shen looking for the puck. Makes a nice maneuver. Gets to Simmons. Simmons the shot. He scores! Nifty little play by Shen, sets up Simmons, and the Flyers are back on top. It's 3-2 to two as Simmons spots his 15th and scores for a case of Tasty Cake. Boy, this is hard work and a lot of communication and coordination. Scott Lawton was part of it. So was Mark Streit. Lawton covered the point when Streit got in on the boards. Finally, the puck came out to Wayne Simmons, and did he ever thread it to the top corner? Braden Shen was in on it, too. Four players were all part on a coordinated effort on that far side, with Simmons finally getting the puck here wide open. Yeah, and he got that puck seen between three players, too, which was great, and he recognized that he wasn't able to go much further without shooting that puck, and he does. He took advantage of Kemper. That's a tremendous shot by Simmons. Takes Give the Flyers the lead again. Club leadership in goals back from Jake Voracek. His 15th of the year, and he has seven in his last 10 games. So the Flyers have a lead again. 4.25 remaining in the period. And that'll go all the way down the ice. Nick Schultz takes a look around and then plays it up for Roffel. He is able to backhand it out to setter, but Brodine gets it right back in, and Zucker will twist it down low. 
Tomlinville and Schultz come together. Drew flagging that one out of midair, punting it to the other side of the ice, but right there, the wild shot attempt by Suter was blocked. It bounces to Pominville, back to Suter. And now Pominville looking for it again. It's a Zucker side of that pass for Coyle. Coyle twisting and turning with a puck. Coyle, side angle try. That one went right on through. Played by Brodine there. The wild trying to set up shop in the Philadelphia zone again. Pominville chopped that by Giroux. Puck dug loose by Cook. Went off of Giroux and off the side of the net, and Emery decided to cover up. It's the Flyers and Wild. On Comcast Sportsnet. I'm Nicholas Grossman. I'm Braden Coburn on behalf of the Philadelphia Flyers. I'd like to wish you happy holidays. Happy holidays indeed. It NHL is. shuts down for three days. Yeah. Hey, they're all set right there. That, and that, uh, that looks brand new. That's an early Christmas gift right there. I think you're right. Spots of orange as always, no matter where we go in the crowd. We're gonna drop this puck again and do it all over again. 335 remaining in this second period. Flyers trying to hit the Christmas break at 500. They can win this game. They will be the break-even point in terms of points percentage. And they'll be there for the first time since uh, over a month ago, back in mid-November. Shot goes wide off the draw. Here's Luke Chen. We'll lead up to Couturier. And Couturier will get it in. Dumped on the play with Reed. Fire still get their first power play of this game. It was Brodine. We're told now that instead of Lawton on the second assist on the Simmons goal, it's going to be Mark Strike adding another assist to his total. He's been piling those up of late. It's nine assists in his last ten games. Reed gets the puck into the Minnesota zone. Pepper will set it up. And who else could Suter starting up ice? Got it off of Niederreiter, but it went in to the crowd up over the glass. Well, if you want to kick your Flyers experience up a notch this January, just get your own suite for the night. It includes private bathroom, weight service, great catering options for 12 to 24 guests. How about a bachelor party? A bachelorette party? Birthday? Well, you name it. 215-389-9500. Guarantee a great time. As we said, lots of home ice hockey ahead for the Flyers once they get home from this trip. So they have plenty of opportunities. See the Flyers at the Wells Fargo Center in the month of January. Flyers win this draw. Long cross ice pass through center. And they're really trying to center it. Belmar goes to the net. Kemper. Kemper able to make the save. Flyers get the puck back. And a building. Now for Belmar. Belmar fighting off a check. Gets it to Grossman, who tips to strike. Right, looking in the middle, nothing there. Now fires it, goes off of a wild player. Le Cavalier backhands it into the slot, but right there's Parisi. And he is able to move it ahead. And then back, will go back across ice. Oh, into the puck there. The defenseman moving up. He'll just tip it deep into the Philadelphia zone. 15 remaining in this second period. Grossman checked. Wild get the puck out into the slot. Bannock turning with it. And he is checked there by Le Cavalier, and the puck out to center. And then back along the line, Grand Lind will just chop it deeper to Philadelphia Ice and go off on a change. That's a terrific effort by Vinny Le Cavalier. That's the kind of competitiveness that Craig Berube is looking for from him, and he has delivered since coming back into the lineup. Awful missing Giroux with that pass as he had Drew and Borchek going toward the net. And now Giroux has to go back into his own zone to get the puck. Dropped it off. And the pass ahead from Nick Schultz to Raffle, and now Voracek, right wing feed. Giroux flying into the zone, the shot! He missed it wide, all the way out to Schultz. Puts it back in along to the captain, and now it's back to Schultz. Schultz firing one wide. Raffle had been upended away from the play, couldn't get in on the puck in the wild clear of the zone. Now here's Spurgeon with some room. Drop pass, Pominville, blast, and that's blocked by Schultz. The Flyers shot block leader. Lawton gives to Voracek, steamrolling up the right wing. Voracek spun around. He was trying to make a play there, but Brodine defeated his progress. And now it's Pamu. Voracek was at the end of his shift. Now that goes back to that conditioning we talked about. He's in such great shape this year. Still had that burst left in him, even at the end of a shift. Last minute of play in the now second period. to the Philadelphia zone by Coyle. And what's incredible about Voracek is, yes, he's in great shape. He's got great 
lung capacity to be able to stay out there. He lost 10 pounds, but he's as powerful as he was. He hasn't lost one ounce of strength. They're going to wave off icing here with 44 seconds remaining in the period. McDonald taken into the boards by Cook, and Cook comes away with a puck. Coyle joins in the scramble. And now Mc, uh, Simmons back after, moving it ahead for Braden Shen. Now back to McDonald. He hits Simmons, he finds the puck, and then banks it ahead. Never got to Shen. Peter Ryder cut it off. Bodies coming together and center of the puck goes to Luke Shen. Final 20 seconds of this second period. Couturier to Braden Chen. Back to Couturier. He's checked by Niederreiter. Braden Chen will slip the puck along for Umberger. 10 seconds in the period. Umberger surrounded by wild players. And it'll be Coyle going back the other way. One last rush. It is past tip by Grossman. Fires get to it. One second and Couturier runs out of time as the second period comes to an end. Wayne Simmons. Here's the Flyers, the lead after two with his 15th goal of the year at 15-22, 3-2 Flyers through two. Tonight's Flyers Wild second period was brought to you by Mazda. Mazda is KBB.com's lowest cost to own brand over five years. By the Pennsylvania Lottery. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot now has an estimated annuity of $142 million. Pennsylvania Lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. Players must be 18 years or older. Also brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Downstairs we go. Chris Sterian with Wayne Simmons. Wayne, is this the biggest period of the year coming up from you guys from a standpoint of getting back into things? Yeah, um, you know, we got to get back to 500. We know that. I think we've been playing a lot better as of late. Um, we kind of stopped playing there and, you know, in the little in the middle of the first and, you know, a couple minutes of the second, but we got back to our game. We started getting more shots on net and, you know, we got another goal. Take us through your goal really quick. Um, Shenner and Lost made a great play. We were in on the four check there, and you know Shenner made a nice pass to me in the middle. And I just tried to shoot it as quick as possible. Simmer, good luck in the third. Thanks a lot, buddy. Ninth second period goal of the year for Wade Simmons. He likes those goals in the middle stanza. Coming up next, intermission live. John Borick, Al Morgani will analyze what they saw in period number two. That's right after this. Brought to you by your Philadelphia Super Network Buick GMC dealers. And by Cure Auto Insurance. Drive well. Just ahead through two periods, here are your numbers, courtesy of the Rockman Institute at Jefferson. Flyers are still looking for their first power play, but it's been an all-hands-on-deck. Greg Berube evening out the ice time, and the Shen brothers just happen to be a combined plus four. Nice night for them. There's the scoring summary. Coyle tied the game on the power play. Simmons put the Flyers back on top with his 15th. Our GMC NHL update takes you to MSG, the Red Hot Rangers. Longest winning streak in the NHL right now, six games. They're looking to add to it. And it was Rick Nash with his 21st goal of the year, giving the Rangers a 1-0 lead. And Marty St. Louis will make it 2-0 right there. Whipping that one home, and so it's 2-0 New York. They go to the third period. They try to make it seven consecutive wins. All the winning the Flyers have done, 5-1 and 3 now in their last nine. They haven't been able to make up a lot of ground in the playoff chase in the Metropolitan Division because those Rangers have been playing well. The Flyers can only control what they're doing and what they're trying to do is make it three consecutive wins to start this road trip. If they can have a good third period here tonight, they'll get that done. They have the 3-2 lead. Here's Grossman to the puck. Dropping it back to Strike and then right back to Grossman. And the rink wide feed for Voracek. It got away from Jake. And Suter is back. Circles his own net. Voracek following him all the way. Knocks the puck away, but it goes into the skates of another wild player along the boards. And Suter's able to find it again. Both teams will make some player changes. 40 seconds into the period. And Jake Voracek is just as strong when he's riding somebody off the puck. Couturier off a of steal moves in. Quick shot. Save Kemper. The rebound side of the net. Reed after it. Reed got it back to the side of the net. And now it bounces to Kemper. He's trying to cover, and he does. Eventually get the whistle, although Suter has Couturier in a headlock, rips his helmet off, and you begin to wonder what's going to get a penalty called here. 
While they separate, we tell you about the state of hockey. That's what they call Minnesota, and the reason there's hockey everywhere. Yes, there's the wild, there's also great college hockey, there's high school hockey, and there's grassroots, youth hockey, and outdoor rinks like this one, where the kids are just having fun with the goalie here. <laughs> Not a lot of defense being played, but... Uh, <laughs> There's just such a love for the sport. It really is. And it's played, as you mentioned, at the grassroots level, recreationally, and it's played for fun so often here in Minnesota. Now the Wild in their 14th season, of course, before the Wild, the North Stars were here before they moved to Dallas. But it really starts with the young guys like that here in this state. Flyers moving up. As Couturier will... Sling it in, Reed back around behind, and then Scandella will clear it up. Number to try to keep it in. He's finally jabbed through. And Parisi to the puck. Parisi from the angle, and that shot off of Emery. Right back to Parisi, and he scores! First shot gave Emery trouble. The second one beats him. And this game is tied at three as Parisi scores again. Although there is going to be a conversation here with the war room as they're going to check it out in Toronto. Well, Ray Emery objected to something right away on this play. But they've been trying to get sharp angle stuff at Emery since the game began. And Ray Emery looked like he had that side sealed off. Could it have gone through the outside of the net? Oh, the net was up in the air. It went it, under it the went net. Under the net. It went under the net. That is no goal, guys. You're right. Right under the net. Breezy came out. I think he tried to sell it himself. I don't know how he could not have known. I mean, he had to know. Well, you got to try to sell it, though, right? Chris? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. You're right. But Ray knew, and he, he didn't overreact, but he said, hey, listen. He knew, he, Ray Emery knew he had the post sealed off. Watch his right pad here. There's no room at all. So Ray right now is saying, excuse me? The net went up and down so quickly. Yeah, it's, here's the call coming. After video review, it has been determined that the puck was off the ice, the puck, or the net was off the ice, the puck went under the net, no goal. To Bill, not making the big crowd here at XL Energy Center very happy as the Flyers stay on top 3-2 and Zach Parisi is denied what would have been his 19th career goal against the Flyers. Parisi seems as though he's not convinced but seemed pretty clear in the replay but you know the net did come up and go back down so quickly he might not have noticed it. Parisi heads back to the bench. The faceoff is in the neutral zone. But that's why we have video replay. Hey, exactly right. Worked perfectly right there. That was almost impossible to, to see at real oh. speed. I had no clue. And now they get it back. Vanek a shot and a save by Emery as the Wild almost got the goal again. Dangerous player there. Braden Shen checked by Coyle in center. And now Lawton back. Harassed. Moves it ahead to Shen, who banks it ahead for Simmons. Simmons working on Suter. He's all by himself. And so he'll change direction and get it into the slot for a shot by Lawton. It's blocked. Need a rider. Move it back across the ice. And the wild move up. Former Islander flings in. Emery will glove it. And then the second thoughts about keeping the puck in play. And gets the whistle. Time to give the answer to our Jeep trivia question of the game. We asked how many times the Wild have appeared in the playoffs. Five times, 03, 07, 08, at each of the last two seasons. And at each of the last two sojourns into the playoffs, their season came to an end at the hands of the Chicago Blackhawks. I had that. You said you didn't already. Now. You did some oh. research, evidently, huh? No, I thought you'd forget about the first part. <laughs> I don't put those questions together. I just read them, but that was uh, it's the, uh, the wild story in terms of the playoffs. They're trying to make it three straight years. They're going to have to go some. They have struggled of late. And in the West, you struggle for even a week or two, and you fall back. Oh, and a shot there that deflected and went wide. Fires get it back. 
Lynn was checked, but he moved it ahead. And Cavalier to the other side of the ice. Vandebelde off the side of the cage. Justin Falk to it. Not to be confused with the Justin Falk from the Carolina Hurricanes. Two different guys, different spellings in the last name. Byers hustled to a loose puck here. Looking to set something up. Raffle <gasps> tried to pass Whoa. it and deflected off a wild player right in on Kemper. He had to be alert to stop that one. Hey, how about giving an up-close and personal holiday gift with Jake Voracek autograph photo combo tickets to the Flyers' Wives Carnival? This is a VIP experience with the NHL's leading scorer, and it's available right now at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com slash carnival. Yep, there'll be a lot of other Flyers guys there as well, but get up close personal with Jake Voracek. See if he's still as hot then as he is now in terms of his goal scoring and playmaking. Here's Giroux trying to back it. That one bounces high in the air and Boyd was just batting it to the corner. Could have become dangerous for the while. We're going to play it back in. Flyers will. Raffle doing the honors. He's going to go off on a change. Wild start back. Suter again. To Cook and now Koivu. Koivu is checked. Let's take it into the wall, but the Flyers have the puck. And Voracek, long outlet. Drew's got it. He'll drop it off for Reed and across the line. Reed takes a look to the backhand. Sent it back through the slot, but nobody home for Philadelphia. Drew tips the puck away again. He's at the end of a long shift. Strike will send it in. Reed chasing. And he and a wild player cancel one another out. That was Brodeen. Now Reed is back up to twist it behind the net. Suter there up the wall, trying to keep it in, but unable to do so is Strike. So he'll play it back at his own line as we take past four minutes into this third period. Couturier tips that. It's going to go all the way down the ice and result in the whistle for icing. Everything has to move forward for the Flyers. No risky plays in the neutral zone. They have this game where they want it with a 3-2 to two lead. Still can make plays if there's enough time and then there's enough space. You shouldn't have to try any low percentage plays, especially those kinds of plays that could lead to a Minnesota counterattack. Off the faceoff, it's Reed taking it out to the neutral zone. Stopped just past the red line by Scandella. And finally, the puck bounces away. Here's Scott Lawton. Over to Grossman. Now ahead off the stick of Reed and into the Minnesota zone. The Files will get their change. It's a great shift by Matt Reed. He was the last one to get a change. He bought time for his guys by scrumming along the near boards. Good shift, his best of the game. McDonald moves the puck ahead and the Flyers to center. Simmons in the middle. He's got Shen dropping it back. The shot! Kemper the save. Wasn't quite sure where it was. Lawton took the shot and then was cross-checked from behind well after the whistle had blown. Peter Ryder and Simmons having some words as well. And they'll settle things down. Gives us a chance to give you a look at this schedule for the Flyers. Here's the pre-Christmas portion of this eight-game road trip. So far, so good. And the Flyers trying to make it three for three here tonight. Then after the three-day break, the Flyers will be in action on the 27th in Nashville. And that starts the second part of that trip, which takes them... Uh, all over the country, quite frankly. That really is a three-day break because there aren't even any practices. It's mandatory three days. Everything shut down so the players can just chill and relax. It makes that first game back after Christmas a little interesting for all players in the league. <laughs> it does. Especially yeah. goalies. Even playing uh, field for sure, Billy. Yeah. Especially the first uh, about <laughs> that 12 minutes of those games. A little rough. Cavalier and Falk in front of Chris. And together. And now they scrum in the corner. Coyle trying to get to that puck. Jabs it up the wall. Flyers keep it in. There's McDonald. A shot. Score! Redirection in front. Vinny LeCavalier has got his third in the last two games. And the Flyers now lead by a score of 4-2. to two. McDonald will pick up his 100th National Hockey League point. And LeCavalier... Another goal as he scores for a case of Tasty Cake. And this is the fourth line again. Pierre Edouard Belmar with a laser of a pass over to McDonald, who did a great job of just collecting it and getting the shot in front for Le Cavalier to deflect. 
What a great play, though, again, oh. by those, that whole line right there. Just a, a great second effort by Belmar. Getting it back, and then Vinny just playing good, solid, fundamental hockey. Go to the front of the net. Huge goal. Well, the Flyers have their second two-goal lead of this game. Just over 14 minutes to play here in the third. Nick Schultz for Raffles. There's cross ice with that. That'll bank to the Minnesota line where Suter's waiting for it. Well, Caballé, now five goals on the year and three of them in the last two games. Suter dishes on the left wing, hoping for Cook. Goes into the corner. And Raffles with a pass for Giroux. He's quickly checked, but stays with it to kick it ahead to Voracek. They get it out of the zone, and then Voracek from the red line pumps it into the Minnesota zone. Boy, the secondary scoring is not an issue now, is it? It is not. The last eight games, that's the third goal by the fourth line, the Couturier line in the last eight games, six goals in the Lawton line. That includes tonight, eight goals for that line. Here's Couturier, a shot, and the save by Kemper. He will hang on. The Flyers get a big goal here in the third. Vinny LeCavalier is suddenly red hot, and the Flyers have a 4-2 advantage. Come back to Minnesota. Having a look at Ray Emery right there. Ray has got the Hyundai safe of the game. Right back out front, right on Nino, Nino Niederreiter in front of the net. And another great effort here. Charlie Coyle delivers it. Niederreiter with a great second effort. Ray Emery with a better second effort. That's good goal for the was Critical save, too, at that point of the hockey game. But what is the Hyundai great save of the game? And also, Ray Emery pointing out that that net had come up. Disallowed Minnesota goal instead of a 3-3 game. And moments later, the fire score to make it 4-2. Big swing. Allen rolls it on Ray, and he was able to cover up just in time. Lucy went hard to the net. And then the boards. Bob Zepp is backing up. He won the game in Winnipeg with his first start in the NHL. You know, he was both on Ron Hextall's radar and Paul Holmgren's. Hextall was the GM in Los Angeles, and we'll finish that up because it's an interesting story, but when they came together, when Hextall came to the Flyers, this is as good a time as any. Three years They're ago, cooperating Ron, with you. <laughs> well, Ron Hextall was with his LA Kings playing a preseason game in Berlin. The LA Kings owner owned the team, the Polar Bears, in Berlin. Berlin played before the Kings did the same day. Ron Hextall got a chance to see Rob Zepp, and he was immediately on his, his radar. He liked him. When Ron Hextall joined the Flyers organization, he got together with Paul Holmgren and found out that he was on Holmgren's radar as well. They made a concerted effort to sign him, and now he's a member of the Flyers organization. And Craig Berube telling us before the game he would have no hesitation playing him again on this trip if he basically takes a little time getting back from his injury and he's been very impressed with his work in practice says he's, he's an accomplished goaltender you can tell uh, he's been playing the game a long time and he's got the athletic ability the word you hear is polished yeah means he's been around and he's mm -hmm. a guy that's seen different kinds of action so he's been good wild moving in here the pass behind niederreiter wayne simmons moves it back the other way lawton couldn't come up with it braden shen does but they oh. say the play is offside somebody from behind i think it was luke shen was yelling get the red line and that's the objective. Get the red line so you can make sure you chip pucks deep. Keep the play moving forward. That was very close to being an outstanding play. By a foot, it was offside. So now it'll be the Belmar line. I don't want to call him the fourth line anymore. The no. Belmar line is yeah. out on the ice. I hear that. There's Vandebelde, by the way. The only Minnesota-born flyer. From Moorhead, Minnesota. It doesn't mean he's right next door it's about 250 miles <laughs> northwest it's a big state the of state of hockey yes. yep there he is the flyers get the puck and the building got it into the zone Bowen wrapped up by belmar scandela pinned by le cavalier Bowen comes away with the puck and is able to clear tumbling to the ice was mcdonald this goes all the way down so it's icing against minnesota they also, the Flyers have Matt Reed, who played his collegiate hockey in the state of Minnesota. That was Bemidji State. That's also a long way away. It's also not in the suburbs of St. Paul, no. Minneapolis. No, you've got to like winter and trees, guys, if you're one of Bemidji. Trees, yes. <laughs> Lakes as well. 
lakes in the yeah. summer, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. They recruit a lot of the Canadians from up in Manitoba, is what I was told. And the kids way up there think that they're, you know, basically have gone to heaven coming to Bemidji. <laughs> Here's Jake Borachek around behind that. Out the other side. He got the shot on goal. Kemper was starting to cheat a little, but able to make the save. They tell them they're palm trees, and some of them <laughs> <Yeah>. believe it. <laughs> That's right. When they get there, they may feel like palm trees to them from northern Manitoba. Oh. Yeah, Minnesota's warm to somebody, huh? Yes. He said Bemidji, not Bermuda. <laughs> there is Strike to Giroux. His offering goes off a stick across. I Zucker to it. And now the pass for Cook. Punts it into the Philadelphia zone. He'll chase with Strike. They tie each other up. Grossman is there. He's checked by Zucker. The puck squirts to the other quarter. And Reed is there. Right back to Strike. He gets there underneath it ahead to Couturier. And Couturier will force it through center ice. Suter has it there. He'll bank it ahead. Zucker's pass to the middle. Cut off by Nick Schultz. And Nick Schultz banking that puck back through the neutral zone. Pokes it again. 743 games Nick Schultz played as a member of the Minnesota Wild. Still more than any other player. Now playing against them. There's Parisi in his shot. Deflected. Goes off the glass all the way out to the other point. Suter is there. Sent it toward the net. Couturier knocked it down. He escapes a check and starts up. John Couturier. And harassed from behind. Still able to force one in off of Kemper to the corner. And he follows in after it. It's tipped away from him. And Grandlin has it with some speed to center. And Kyle Grandlin. Deep into the Philadelphia zone. Each Shen is back up the wall. Parisi. I did knock it down. Could not. Simmons barrels out to center ice. His pass for Lawton. Lawton trying to work around Rodine. Easier said than done. He is a solid defenseman. And he'll clear the puck back down into the Philadelphia end. McDonald quickly ahead for Braden Shen. And it's punched through by Lawton, but all the way down it goes. So this will be icing on Philadelphia as we approach the midpoint of this third period. Well, if you're looking to finish up your holiday shopping, you can do it with tickets to a Flyers game this winter. The team is back on home ice nine times in January, beginning with Ottawa on January the 6th. At the 7 p.m. start, you can shop online at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com. Nine home games in January. That kind of makes up for this long stretch on the road. Indeed it will. And again, if the Flyers can get through this long stretch and hold their own, and they're certainly off to a great start in that oh, yeah. direction. Uh, can make some hay at home. Here's Niederreiter. Wrapped up by McDonald. Works through it. Sergeant behind the cage. Goes out the other side. And the ability after it. The Flyers will move it out. Here's the Cavalier. Waiting his pass, and they say that play was offside as Belmar went in. 9.46 to go in the third. After seven games as a healthy scratch, he worked his way back into the lineup. And two nights ago in Winnipeg, he scored not one goal, but two. The second was the tying goal that set the game into overtime. In case there was any doubt about Vinny's commitment to being back, he is tallied here in Minnesota. Three goals in the last two games, and number 40 is alive and kicking again. Off the neutral zone, draw the Flyers' control and send it in. And there is the Cavalier again, up on his skates. Looking for that puck behind the cage. Turns with it and fired it right through the slot. Reaching for that was Strike, couldn't get it, but good support coming back. From Vandevelde, and it's that kind of support we've been seeing on this road trip. The long stretch is the forward supporting the defense, and vice versa. Five-man game in front of the goaltender that Craig Ruby's been talking about all year. Long outlet here. Michael Roffel takes a look. Comes to a stop as the Flyers are changing behind him. He's dumped, but got the puck to Giroux. Warcheck overskates, and Brodine comes up with it. Jonas Brodin was given a long contract extension during... In our season, this will be icing against Minnesota. Let's take a look at our Toyota turning point of the hockey game. And Vinny LeCavalier's fourth goal is going to be the Toyota turning point. You see Andrew McDonald with the shot. Vinny going to the front of the net. That gave the Flyers the insurance goal. And Vinny right there. You can see how happy he is. He's played very well. There's his season numbers last year. Still pretty uh, productive hockey player. 20 goals, 17 assists, and a more than a half point every other game. Vinny right now said, listen, I want to get back in the lineup. A couple weeks ago, he said, I want to get a chance to play and prove myself, and he's done so. 
been very, very good the last few games, especially since being reinserted in the lineup after sitting some time out by Craig Berube. He's gotten involved, hasn't he? Yes, he's gotten Got involved, and he's playing the game the right way. McDonald shot off the faceoff and the save by Kemper. Myers have it. Board check. The maneuver behind the net was taken off the play. Yeah, Minnesota will move out. Here's a pass. Zucker getting a step. Zucker shot. And there's a penalty coming up as that one went to the corner. And the Flyers are going to be shorthanded again. A hooking minor indicated. And so power play number five ahead for Minnesota. Andrew McDonald was snug right up on Zucker. And when he took the puck on his forehand, he was able to spin and get loose. McDonald did a good good enough job that Zucker didn't get a clean shot away. I was wondering if there might be a penalty shot called, but the Flyers will take this and try to kill off their fifth penalty. Yeah, their fifth shorthanded situation. They have not had a power play in the game. That's amazing. It is, isn't it? Five nothing. Yeah, you just don't see that. Especially One when side. you're ahead 4-2 in yes. the goals category. It would be certainly impressive if they can manage a victory. Even though they have been shorthanded much more than they have been on the power play. Here is Couturier taken in by Parisi. Schultz working on Poirbu. The puck bounces ahead and the Flyers have it. Drew will take some time before bouncing one in on Kemper. The Flyers quickly get Drew off the ice though. With Couturier and Reed up front on the kill. Tommy Bell over skates. Reed to the puck. And he finds Couturier. Couturier has the Flyers' only short inning goal this season. Good to the boards. He's happy to keep the puck down in the Minnesota zone as long as he can. And by the time the Wild will get the puck to Philadelphia ice, over 40 seconds of this power play will have elapsed. Here's Koivu to Parisi. And now back to the captain of the Wild. Now for Coyle and out to the point. Cross it comes to Suter. He's just going to fling that one in. There's Koivu trying to set her. It was blocked second try. He got it to Koyu, who threw it across the slot, but out of the reach of Parisi. Back out Pominville. And now Parisi. Center that pass. Takes it back from Koivu, and now it's Pominville. In the middle, Suter. Shot goes wide. Grossman hard on the puck, drills it, and got it out of the zone. Myers will get all new players out on the ice. Pominville slips the puck around to the other side. Granlund after it. Belmar over there. Belmar wins the battle. Comes away with the puck and speeds to center ice. And stops as he gets across the line. His pass is to Coburn. Coburn shot blocked off by Pominville. But down to 23 seconds remaining on the Minnesota power play. Less than seven minutes remaining in the third period. Suter moving up. Right wing feed. It comes back in the middle. Granlund has it chopped away. Recaptured though by the Wild and Spurgeon. Lawton had a hold of his jersey, got away with that. And now the Wild are offside, so Belmar going to wait. Takes a look at the penalty clock, flings it all the way down, and that'll do it. Outstanding penalty killing by the Flyers. Pierre Edouard Belmar looked back at the linesman and gave him a little wave, saying, you know, I was with you on that. I heard you. Thank you. So the Flyers back to full strength. Grossman tips to Raffle. And the Flyers will move up three on three to center here. Giroux taking a look to see if anybody's coming late and drops it back. A penalty upcoming against Minnesota as Giroux dropped that back into the skates of Emery as he was heading to the bench. I thought Ray was joining the rush. <laughs> it kind of looked like it, really. So the Flyers I, I, here maintaining possession as time ticks off the clock. This is a good move because, of course, they're ahead in the game. They'll eventually get the power play if Minnesota gets control, and they do right there. And we'll go to break. 5.50 remaining in the third. This wild game is brought to you by Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. By Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. And by Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. The capital. Looking brilliant right there here in Minnesota. 4-2 the score. The Flyers will get their first power play of the game. With 5.50 remaining in the third as Charlie Coyle sits for roughing. They could get a power play goal and pretty much put this game away. But uh, while being aggressive in that vein, you also don't want to make any kind of mistake that would give the 
Wild a shorthanded chance. Fires power play, sixth ranked. It is 0 for its last 10. Wild an outstanding penalty killing team, and they do have three shorthanded goals. Here is Giroux. Right wing feed to Voracek. Kicks at the puck, but could not get it past the Wild checking. Minnesota sends it all the way down. There's your McDonald's power play payoff contestant. The first and maybe only of this game. Here is Giroux. Winding it in. Get us to the corner. Spurgeon. Forced by Shen. Carter couldn't do anything with it. The Flyers get the puck back. Strike to Giroux. Second in the NHL and power play points. Giroux looking back out. Strike. And now Voracek. Voracek flips one. Backhander save. Kemper as he got that one off of Shen. Simmons digging the puck loose. Goes to the other corner, but Carter is there with time, and he'll shovel it out of the zone and down the ice. 55 seconds on the power play. 440 in the third period. Myers have now outshot the Wild 28-22. Uh, over the average that the Wild usually give up in a game, but as we mentioned earlier, the Wild have been allowing more shots here of late. On the rush, LeCavier could not come up with that. Reed, though, gets it back, keeps it in the zone, backhands to the corner. Umberger over after it. Reed, just the touch pass there. And now the shot from the point gets caught up. Umberger and chop at it, but it was denied in front. Brodine moves it ahead. Into the middle. Scandella. Scandella on the right wing. And now the shot blocked off by Schultz as Parisi couldn't get it through. Schultz trips his man up. No call. Le to the puck. Banked it, but not out of the zone. Suter's there. A shot blocked in front. And now the Flyers have it. Reed moving it at a two-on-one. Le Cavalier with Umberger. Le Cavalier coming off the wall with it. Makes the deep. Got the shot off, and it's tipped away. Back around to the other side. The power play is over. 3.40 now remaining in this third period. As the Flyers try to finish this one off. There is Suter. The right wing feed. Granlin giving room. The shot blocked off by Grossman. Gotten back and then played to... Spurgeon who fakes the shot and then finds Suter. Now Spurgeon again a shot and that one deflected and goes off the safety netting and play is stopped. We have some top shelf performers so let's look at them. The Mazda top shelf performers. Claude Giroux, his 11th goal of the season, six points in his last three games. Big four check with another assist. Vinny Le Cavalier is now officially hot with three goals in his last two games. Scandella, Suter, and insist Charlie Coyle. But it's been mostly Flyers. It was Flyers at the beginning of the game, Minnesota for the middle part of the game, and it's been the Flyers when it's counted here in the third period. And they steamroll out to center here as Vorchek banks it deep into the Minnesota zone. Brodine after it. Vorchek tipped it. And now Granlin to it. They'll move it ahead into center. Pommelville to the middle. Going off on the left wing. Now Vanek will send it around behind the net. Gets to the side of the cage. Giroux clears it up, but not out. Full in there. Wrist shot deflected. Score! But it'll be waved off. High stick. Immediately waved off by Tim Peel as that was it with a stick up high. And so it will remain a 4-2 game. Was also confirmed by one of the linesmen right away that came over showing and indicating high stick as well. Yeah, it was only about maybe three feet too high. <laughs> <laughs> and it shouldn't be. The crossbar is the benchmark. Yeah. It's not the shoulders. Yeah. That one's up over yeah. Ray's glove right yes, now. Or the, he's reaching. The top so, of the right. outer glass yes. might have so, been the... Uh, this is a short one here, guys. Barrier there. After video review, the call on the ice stands. It was high stuck, high stick in, no goal. Well... Tim Peel didn't have it completely right on the one that went under the net. He said the puck was in the air. This time he had it right. The puck was in the air, and it was way too high in the air. Good job, Tim. I like Yo's team. Still down two goals. Less than three minutes remaining on the third period clock. A couple of disallowed goals, but no real controversy with either of them. Both obviously should not have counted. That puck is sent down the ice by the Flyers from their side of the red line. An offensive zone draw up coming for the Wild. When you broke down this road trip to start, you would have said the first four looked 
huge challenges, teams that are in playoff contention or near it. And then the last four against teams that have struggled some this year. And the Flyers trying to finish this off to make it three for three. But they're going to have to face six attackers here. Is Kemper? So I'm going to the bench. Six. Minnesota Wild Skaters on five for the Flyers. Boy, who's tossed out of the draw. Hominville steps in against John Couturier. And Couturier won it to strike. Long for Umberger. He got it up, but not out. And bounces into the slot. Koivu shot glove save Emery. And he'll squeeze it. Ray Emery kind of reached up with that glove and snagged that out of the midair. Nico Koivu trying to use that defenseman as a screen. And Grossman did a nice job, I thought, letting Emery have that shooting lane and the puck lane heading to the net. Good job by Ray Emery. He's been very, very solid in this game tonight. That's the good word to describe him, Chris, is solid. He won the game in Toronto, but was less than perfect, and he admitted that, but he just was able to grind it out and get the win. This will be another icing call against Philadelphia. Schultz just chopping that puck after his bouncing around in the slot area. And with a two-goal lead, he'll take the icing just to get that puck out of a trouble spot. Take a look at our Bud Light player of the game tonight, guys. And Vinny LeCavalier, who's having a very, very good uh, series of hockey games of late, is the Bud Light player of the game. He's done a good job. I said earlier, he's playing the game the right way, guys. Uh, he's doing the little things it takes to win, going to the front of the net, and keeping things simple. He's been good. He's got enough skill. We know that. Referee just got hit with a puck. His play carries on. Out to the point. Suter for Spurgeon. Spurgeon side of the net. In front it goes. Unable to finish. Was Parisi. And then from the angle, he couldn't get it back out in front. Wild getting some chances here with a goaltender pull. Koivu for Parisi behind the cage. Got it to Pominville. Pominville looking for some room. And then gets it to the point. Spurgeon. Back to Pominville. Now side of the net, waiting there is Vanek, and he misses everyone with a pass, and it goes all the way down the ice. And Ray Emery forced that pass, that bad pass, by having his stick fully extended with the paddle down. He gave Vanek no chance to wrap around to the front and get his shot off. Wild come right back up. Spurgeon from the red line, hammers it in. Strite is right there, he'll try the glass. And he bounces it out to center. Puck picked up there by the Flyers. The pass across ice. And the shot goes wide from Belmar. Shen made the pass. Thought Belmar had maybe a better angle and a better chance, but he missed the target. He did have a better <laughs> angle. He just hurried it. Well, it's set back in. It hits the safety netting. So play stopped. 115 remaining in the third. Ray Emery with a great poke check at the far end. That's the one that Vanek tried to make that play out front. And all Ray does here is discourage the whole situation. That forces Vanek to make a pass he's not comfortable with yep. and sends it out of the zone. That's really, really good, smart play by Ray Emery. No one, Vanek had no angle to do any damage from the side right there. And Nick Schultz looked like he had the back door pretty well taken care of too, so good combined effort. I know one guy who's going to get razzed after this game, fellas, and the Flyers get this win here. <laughs> Here, Edward Belmar. Yeah. Uh, well, his mom, his mom, Frederic, watches the games in France, and he told me the other day. So when I was a kid, all the parents would be yelling at their kids. You know, did they play well or not well after the game? I would look up. He said my mother would either have a thumb up or a thumb down. It was as simple as that. There's a shot, and that one glances off of Emery as Scandella fired from the point, and now it's cleared all the way down. And they will call it icing again. Thumb up on his performance overall yes. tonight. Thumb down on his empty net attempt. How's that? <laughs> I think that's fair. fair one for this guy. But he's playing right. some great hockey yeah, along with his line mates. They've really been the story or one of the stories. I mean, a lot of them, but one of the stories of his last two games for the Flyers. Well, one of his advantages that Pierre Bar Bar Belmar has in adjusting and in, in being a good player is his IQ. He's really bright. Greg Bruby calling his timeout after that latest icing call. 41 seconds on the clock as he gives his guys a chance to catch their breath and get organized to try to close this one out. Everybody know what you're doing. <laughs> He's still sitting there shaking his head. But now that it's down to 41 seconds, that's a little different than having two minutes on the clock. Braden Chen saying, I set you up. <laughs> So they'll drop the puck here to the right of Ray Emery. The Wild got a late goal. Less than 46 seconds remaining 
to win the game in Philadelphia in November. They're going to need two goals in the last 41 seconds here before it's extra hockey tonight. 5 and 55 on defense for the Flyers. Braden Coburn and Nick Schultz. Giroux and Koivu on the faceoff. And it rattles around. The Wild win it. Suter goes across ice. They move in with it. Back for Suter. It's tipped and it goes out to center. Orchek racing after it. Gets to it. And his pass is across ice. And Rafa will shoot and score into the empty net. And that will put a bow on three straight wins for the Philadelphia Flyers to start this road trip going into Christmas. 5-2 Philadelphia. Raffle scores for a case of Tasty Cake. 16 goals now to start this road trip for the Flyers. For the team that had so much trouble putting numbers up and scoring goals. And yes, they can afford to smile. It's going to be a great Christmas break for the Flyers. Let's go Wayne Simmons. <laughs> the Flyers had only won three road games out of 15 starting this trip, and they have three to begin the trip. And they will have points in six consecutive road games for the first time in three years. As they are putting away the Minnesota Wild. Here, Raffel, a career high as he hits double figures with his 10th of the year. Voracek with another point as he picks up an assist. Final three seconds of this one. The Flyers continue a very impressive start to this trip, but not exactly how they cheer on the ice as the game comes to an end. Belmar's still angry about missing that in that, but he's more angry at a wild player here as he's going after Ryan Carter. Well, Vandevelde got chopped from behind, too, and Luke Shen looked like he had a burr under his saddle. Nothing to be gained for the Flyers. It is the season to be jolly, or not. They're having trouble getting Belmar separated from Carter. Finally, they are. And peace should prevail at this point. And the Flyers will head off to their locker room, winning three straight on the road for the first time since last year. And they've gone now six straight, as I mentioned, getting at least a point on the road. 4-0-2 to be exact for the first time in three years. Quite an impressive start to this long journey. And the Flyers can look at one another on their plane ride home and understand that this road trip has started with complete team efforts in Toronto, then in Winnipeg, and here tonight in Minnesota from goaltending. Two wins by Ray Emery, one by Rob Zepp on this trip. Balanced scoring, getting goals from everywhere, including the top line. And when you have that kind of participation and contribution, both defensively and offensively, you end up with W's. Flyers now 6-1-3 and three overall in their last 10 games. And they'll have three days off before they try to improve on that mark. Do so against one of the top teams in the West so far this year. The Nashville Predators led by Peter Laviolette. Our coverage on Saturday. Comcast Sportsnet begins with Flyers pregame live at 7.30. Here tonight, the Flyers in the state of hockey. And they lead the state of hockey with two more points. Shaw Couturier got him started on the way to the victory. Thanks again to our technical crew today. The producer for Flyers Hockey is Brian Cooper. Associate producer, Beth Healy. Our director is Mike Mullen. For Bill Clement and Chris Terry, and I'm Jim Jackson. Once again, the final score, the Philadelphia Flyers 5 and the Minnesota Wild 2. Stay tuned for Flyers Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance, and have a very Merry Christmas.